Lord, here's the pot. That's what you put your mash in. And uh, this is kept right here. You pour your stuff in there. You put your cap on and connect all this back up. You boil this, the steam comes up, goes over here, down through this pipe to the bottom of this, and then this pipe just goes in the top. So this thing is filled with steam, and it'll go right on over and goes down through this worm. And uh, then it comes out here. After you run about a quart, you pull this stopper out, you pour it back in here. This part's called a thumper. It makes a thumping sound when this steam boils through this uh, liquid down here. And that's kind of like a extra filter on it. And uh, this thing stays full of water and cools the steam and condenses it back into a liquid. And the first that comes out is high alcohol, high grade alcohol. That's probably 180, 190 proof, whatever. And it gets weaker and weaker as you run. And a little steel like this will probably make maybe a gallon or two. Of course, this is a complicated end. And if you want to see a real simple way, uh, I'll take you up here at the cabin and show you a real simple way you can do it with a pressure cooker. Well, we went down and checked out the little steel in the woods. Now I'm going to show you the simplest way you can possibly make this stuff. First thing you need is five gallon or five pound of cornmeal. Pour it in, and you need plain cornmeal. <coughs> it won't work if you got self rising. You need five pound of cornmeal. And five pounds of sugar. And we just dump that in. Now we need a couple of gallons of hot water. And we just dump that in and gallon at a time works good and you just stir it up real good that way you can get it get all that sugar dissolved. It's hard to dissolve it when you've got five gallon of water in there. You need a pound of sugar with a gallon of water. Stir it some more. This is not corn whiskey because pure corn whiskey is made out of nothing but corn. We put sugar in this because. To do it the other way is a long process and complicated. What we're trying to do is do it simply. That feels like it's stirred pretty good. Now I've got three more gallons of water. So five gallons. And 
this is Flashman's yeast for baking bread. But we're not baking bread. <laughs> uh, you want to stir this as you put it in because it'll lump up and it won't work good. check and see how hot it is. You want it about 90 to 95 degrees. If you get it too hot it won't work. If it's too cold it won't work. So it needs to stay around that that uh, temperature. And if it should get cold on you, you take a jug and fill it full of hot water and just lay it down in there and it'll sink. And it'll warm that back up and keep you working right. And that's about all there is to putting it together. Now this is what it should look like the second day. And you can see how the bubbles are working. Uh, it's bubbling all over, but can you see that? I have a thermometer in this thing to keep check on temperature and right now we're running a little over 90 degrees which is about where you need to be between 90 and 95 somewhere in that neighborhood maybe even 100 but not over that notice all the bubbles it's working uh, that's when you're making alcohol And that's about what it should look like the second day. Now this is what it should look like the third day. There's not much activity, but there's still a, a few bubbles, so it's still working some. You keep watching a little bit and you may see a few more bubbles come up. It's not doing much. It'll be ready to run tomorrow. Now this is what it should look like maybe on the fourth day. Sometimes it takes a little longer, sometimes a little less. But when it quits bubbling, that's all you, it's worked out all the alcohol you're going to get. From this point on, if you don't run it today, you'll get less tomorrow than you would today. So today's the day to run it. An old pressure cooker I picked up at a flea market. I took a pressure gauge out and went to the hardware and bought a Roll a 3 8 copper and a fitting that fits on it, a compression fitting. And this end is a pipe plug. And you can get that, it'll fit about anything. We just put that in the hole where we took out the, the uh, pressure gauge. Not much to that. Now, this part got a little paint bucket here. It'll bend this thing around and get a good get a good fit on it. I 
That's a three eighths copper, so I drilled a three eighths hole. But we don't need all this coal, so I'll straighten some of it back out. That ought to be enough. Then we'll turn this part out so we can get it out through this hole. Put this in through this through this hole and bring this over this way. We'll go right into this fish. Good and tight. Don't lose any steam. Now we can take it back off. We're not ready to do that. The compression fitting is already on there, so we can connect up and disconnect anytime we want to. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. so you don't stir it up too bad. But we only need the clear stuff. We don't need all that meal in here. That gets up around the side and it'll scorch. Make an awful taste. Now, I personally like rye whiskey the best, but that's a little more complicated and a little harder to find. Anybody can find corn meal you know, anywhere. This is about a, well it's a 15 and a half quart pressure cooker. So, by the time we get all this out, except all the meal that's in the bottom, we'll about have it full. And if you got more, well you can run some more later. settles in the bottom when it gets through working. I'm going to leave about an inch clearance so we don't boil it over. If you boil it too strong you, you get this beer over in the that ought to be enough. I gotta move all this out of the way. Get my stove up here. Take a little while to heat. Meanwhile, we'll be setting all the rest of this stuff up.
lock this down good because we don't lose the steam. Because that's the liquor in the steam. Okay, so that's going to cook a while, so we'll get this other part set up. Okay, now we've got to put a sealer on this, right around this, because we don't need water coming out. And we need our worm kind of straight, so it don't have water trapped in it. Okay. I need to put this under here to jack this up just a little bit, because I've got to bottle right here I'm going to be running in. Need a little room. So we got that part fixed. Now I've got to put a sealer around this tube because we don't want water running out. I've got to have this bucket full of water. And it's good if you do this the day before. It's some kind of a good sealer. And I do this just in case it leaks. If it does, what runs out will follow this strain and it'll drip on the floor instead of in, in your whiskey. Okay, we should be ready to go there for that part. Now this has been heating for about Oh, maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and I can feel the steam getting up in the pipe. When it starts getting on, on over here, you can tell about where it is. And it's about right here right now. So it'll be another, oh, five or 10 minutes before it starts running. So, now we need to fill this container full of cold water. comes over here. This cold water will condense it back into a, a liquid, which hopefully is alcohol. Now this is pretty hot all the way over to here, so it won't be but just a minute before it starts running. I've got a little leak right here, the reason you need to do that the day before you run. But that's not getting in the whiskey, so we'll be alright. Okay, it's beginning to run. We'll put a little cotton in there to filter it, and I need to turn this flame down a little. So we need to run a real small stream. Just about like that. The reason I use this type of stove, you got good control on your heat. You gotta get me a little taste of that. About a spoonful is all you need. It tastes pretty good. I'll give my cameraman a drink. He love will mess up.
All you can do now is be patient. Just wait for it. I'm going to move over to the other side so I can taste it again. <laughs> Still good. Move this and see what that looks like. Looks like alcohol to me. When you make a small amount like this, you can be running alcohol for a while and then it'll just quit running alcohol and start running weak whiskey or almost water. And this is the first run, it's called a sweet mash. And uh, you don't usually make much on your first run. The next run you should make maybe a quart, but this run it won't be all that much. I'm going to look at it again. Yeah, it's still, still running it. I'll sample it again. It tastes good. I need to show you something about the bead. See how that bead is big bubbles and it's staying on there. So that's well over 100 proof right there. Okay. Okay, I poured that other in that we just looked at in this jar so we can tell what this, what it is running like now. So we run almost another half a pint and it's still, still beating good. As long as them beads come up there and stay, we're doing all right. Well, we've already made a pint. In a good old mason jar. Well, we've run about another half a bottle full. Let's look and see what we got now. It's still pretty high. We're making a lot more than I thought we would. 
You don't make a whole lot on the first one run usually. Set that aside and see what happens. Real low, so you got a little bitty stream. You get it too hot, and it's not good. And this needs to stay cool. You can see the bead on that. That's the uh, first pint we run. If it's weak, that bead won't stay on there very long. And it won't look like that. Okay, we might better check that bead again. See if we're still making liquor. Yeah, it's still making liquor, but it's... Oh, it's getting down toward about 100 proof now. Pour a little of this in this jar and we'll run some more in there and see what we got. Well, we're going to look at it again to see what we're doing. That's getting down to about 100 proof. The bubbles stay on there for a good while. They're half under the water and half on top. That's about 100 proof. When it gets down to that, I quit running because the more you run now, the worse it'll taste. So it's all over 100 proof. So if you want it weaker than that, cut it with water and you'll get a better taste. But I like it straight. So that's all we're going to run. We're going to turn our flame off now. Let that thing cool for a few minutes. And then we'll put up a sour mash run. This is the first pint that we run. You see the bead on that. It don't stay on there very long. And this we put running as soon as it got down weak. And that bead's staying on there good. That's still well over 100 proof. That's not much, but... That's more than we had before we started. Okay, this thing is so we're gonna disconnect it. This thing's still a little bit hot, but we want it to be pretty warm. Now this is what's left out of that run. There's probably uh, another gallon in there that you could run if you want to fool with it. Make a little bit more. But I'm just going to leave it in there because it'll come out high alcohol the next time. So I'm going to take what's in this pressure cooker and put it back in there while it's hot. So to cook that meal. Try to not get burned. I hope that don't melt my cooler. And this time I'm only going to put a half a bag of cornmeal because you'll accumulate a lot of cornmeal after a while. So I'm just going to put a half bag in here. But I'm still going to put five pounds of sugar in. We'll 
stir that in real good. You don't want to put your yeast in yet because it's too hot and it'll just kill the yeast. But how can you let this cool down for oh, a little while when you get down about maybe 100 degrees, 95 to 100, you need to check it or it'll kill the yeast and it won't work. Don't want anybody to be disappointed. That hot water melts that sugar real good and it cooks that needle in. And since this has been run, it'll be a sour mash run and you should make maybe a good quart out of it. We almost made that much that time, which is unusual. And all you got to do is wait about four days till this thing looks like that last one I showed you. On about the fourth day it should clear up and look about like that. You might get a little bigger cap on it this time since we've got more cornmeal in it. And like I say, you need to wait till it cools down before you put the yeast in it. And that's all there is to making moonshine.